Okay, with me now from Los Angeles is political analyst Peter Matthews, also a professor of political science at Cypress College. Peter, when you saw all of this unfolding, and I presume you were looking at the pictures during this yes. one, the summit was happening, did you, and you saw Kim Jong-un and this side of him that we've never seen before. What were you thinking? Were you thinking, oh, what, what a trickster? Or were you thinking, oh, so this is finally what he's like? <laughs> You know what, Cyril, I think the optics were in incredibly remarkable, and I believe Kim Jong-un knew what he was doing, and he played it just to the hilt. Now, the question is, what substance will come out of this? You know, will, and I think it was a great first step for the two leaders of the, both North and South to meet like that, it's never been, happened before, and to cross over in each other's country. Uh, those optics are great, but what will happen? Will South Korea and North Korea sign a treaty that will denuclearize the peninsula? Will they, in fact, unite once again uh, and have a peace treaty for the Korean War and end it finally? The U.S. is a big player there. So the U.S. will have a lot to say about it, but I think this is a great step that President Moon, in fact, has to be given a lot of credit for putting forth his agenda and going to the North and the North offering to meet with President Trump. It all came together so far, but substance have to be accomplished now. Yeah, and we don't know. We don't know at this stage. We just can't. Whether this is a real turning point or whether North Korea is perhaps just playing everyone. So we have to look at the signals. Did you see anything in this summit, any signal that tells you South Korea, North Korea is not faking it this time and this is for real? We've got to go back to the agreed framework. That's our best time to look at what happened back in the 1990s under President Clinton, where there was an agreement for about eight years where the United States and, uh, agreed to provide heavy, heavy fuel oil in exchange for North Korea shutting down its heavy water nuclear reactors and to build two light water reactors in order to get fuel to them. And this was actually supposed to continue and it went quite well, but after a while toward the end of the president's, Clinton's uh, presidency, things got a little bit uh, off track because uh, the, heavy, the heavy, heavy fuel wasn't delivered on time, the light water reactors were never built and North Korea was accused of cheating. And rather than working things out, the United States based under President Bush decided to go the other way. And President Bush accused North Korea of being part of the axis of evil. And while President Bush was invading Iraq and North Korea got concerned about being invaded itself, and that's where the nuclear buildup started up again, and then North Korea ends up now with nuclear weapons. So President Trump needs to learn from the agreed framework and see how he could work with North Korea on this. I think there's a good chance this could be different this time, Cyril. Well, listen hopefully. to how Mr. Trump reacted. This was one of the things he said after he looked at the summit. Okay. I don't think it's ever had this enthusiasm for somebody, for them wanting to make a deal. And yeah, I agree. The United States has been played beautifully like a fiddle uh, because you had a different kind of a leader. We're not going to be played, okay? We're going to hopefully make a deal. If we don't, that's fine. Uh, the United States in the past was played like a fiddle. Money going in and nobody knew what was happening. So Donald Trump doesn't want to be played, and it's quite understandable given North Korea's track record. How do you do that, make sure you're not played, and still give negotiations a chance? How do you balance those two things? We go back to trust but verify, as the Russian proverb goes, trust but verify. And you've got to have inspections, you have to have United Nations involved in it, the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency has to be involved in it. And, and uh, definitely the most important thing is that the U.S. has to come through with its promises, as North Korea will also be expected to. And now here's the question. Will North Korea eventually give up those nuclear weapons? Because that's what tr President Trump wants. And, pres and the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, he wants to be able to be sure his regime will survive, will not be invaded by the U.S., and he wants a peace treaty with the United States, South Korea, and North Korea, ending the Korean War. So those things have to come together step by step. But there has to be inspections, there has to be uh, international inspections involvement in it, as well as more than one country. Some of the other countries that were involved with negotiations earlier should be brought back into it. And I think it's going to happen if, if those things are, are insured. If it has to be step by step, though, and it has to take some time. You know, if, if all of a sudden President Trump gets obsessed and flustered and walks out of the meeting, that's going to be a real tragedy right there. It'll be worse than what happened with meeting with the North Korean uh, leader. All right, Peter Matthews, professor of political science at Cypress College. That meeting between that potential meeting between Mr. Trump and Mr. Kim expected either late May or perhaps early June. We don't know where yet. Two or three locations have now are now still on the short list. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you, Cyril. Take care.